Hello, my name is Massimo Fichera. I'm Associate Professor in Philosophy of Law at the University of Maastricht, Frankfurt to Law. And first of all, I'd like to thank Diritti Comparati and Giuseppe Martinico for allowing me to present my latest book, which is entitled The EU and Constitutional Time, uh, The Significance of Time for Constitutional Change. Um, this book presents a continuation of my argument in the previous book, foundations of the EU as a polity, in which I argue that constitutionalism, and in particular the EU constitutionalism, is characterised by the meta-constitutional rational or security, uh, by which I refer to a sort of political morality uh, that underpins the process of constitution making you know, of a polity. Um, it is therefore not to be confused with the traditional notion of security as, for example, military security or uh, criminal law security, or even the phenomenon of securitization. What I mean, rather, is something that is close to the notion of stability of a political regime, as used, for example, in ancient times, but I also give it a con um, an existential twist, in the sense that by security I refer to uh, the need uh, for policy to face threats to its survival, and the way this policy uh, uh, faces such threats by elaborating princ legal principles and competences um, and powers. Um, that's why um, in a context of the European Union, for example, but also in, in general in the polity, we distinct are distinguished within security between two dichotomies, one between self-preservation and self-empowerment, and the other one between change and permanence. Uh, meaning that a polity, of course, seeks to empower itself and also to preserve itself on one hand, and on the other hand, seeks to change according to the social and political circumstances, but also to preserve a set of values, it needs to preserve a set of values over time. Now, I also distinguish within security between uh, six um, dimensions, which are the special, the temporal, the popular, the ontological, the epistemic, and the reflexive. Now, in this recent book, I focus on the temporal dimension, the dimension of time, and I claim that one important, significant feature of constitutionalism is precisely the attempt to rise about time to exercise control over you know, things and people over an extended period, and reducing, therefore, uh, uncertainty. This we can say, for example, in the case of the European Union, in Articles 53 of the Treaty of the European Union and 356 of the Treaty on Function of the European Union, which refer to the notion of uh, unlimited period, or also the Costa versus Enel case, which refers to the idea of a community of unlimited duration. Now, once we have this aspiration to perpetuity by the EU, of course, we need also to find the conditions, identify the conditions that allow for this policy to last over time. And also we need to know how to activate them. And that's why I uh, necessarily uh, elaborate the notion of communal constitutionalism. And I criticise the European Liberal Project for being too presentist, in meaning too focused on the present time without really incorporating clearly the dimension of the future and, and without looking at a constitutional community as an ongoing deliberative process, which at the same time preserves a set core values and also is open to negotiation. So we have a form of epistemically open, what I call discursive constitutional power. Now, discursive constitutional power is characterized by two discourses, security and rights. Security in the sense that a polity seeks to preserve itself, um, as I said before, uh, as we can see, for example, in the Costa versus Senna or in a Cardi case, and rights in the sense that the polity, of course, tends to promote and provide individuals with rights, as we can see, for example, in the Van Gende Laws case. Now, uh, viewing the EU polity as an ongoing deliberative process allows us therefore to shift from the question of what is its nature to the question of what for, why, what for do we have uh, the European project. That's, what, that's why also uh, a communal constitutionalism is characterised by um, the idea that, well, we need to focus on also local levels of uh, uh, 
deliberation and decision making and encouraging intermediate parties, actors to intervene in a deliberation, such as, for example, trade unions, NGOs, think tanks, but also regions, cities and other forms of local governments. Another feature, another feature of communal constitutionalism is also the move from reciprocity, meaning as tit for tat, so a pure aggregation of individual interests, to mutuality, in which um, entities, different actors, come together, not simply out of an enlightened self-interest, but also because there is an idea of sharing the project, so something more than the sum of separate interests. Uh, and also, Communal constitution is characterized by the fact that it emphasizes the role of future generation and views future generations as having a stake in a decision taken by current generation. But not only that, also um, uh, full understanding of mutuality means that it is not only us who act as representative of those who will be sometime in the future, but also the day when they will actually exist act as representative of current generations, in the sense that we also have a stake in any future decision taken by these generations. And this, of course, uh, we can see in, uh, in uh, many uh, important issues such as environment or global health. And that it is precisely by becoming aware of such degree of mutuality that we see a process of self-understanding of a political community, which elaborates the meaning of how to be secure, what it means to be secure for a polity. And therefore, in this way, uh, through questioning itself and learning as a process of self-learning, um, is able to overcome what I call the paradox of large time, or I use a neologism in German called Kostzeit. In the sense that a community, on the one hand, of course, may seek to preserve its values by um, a commitment established once and for all. But in this case, the risk is that of undermining the democratic process of decision making by binding future generations to something that is decided, decided once and for all. Or, on the other hand, a community may seek to change its constitution frequently over time and adapting it to the social circumstances. But in this case, the risk is that of relinquishing or giving up the idea of a commitment over time. So the way of somehow um, coming out of this impasse is precisely that of somehow allowing um, a deliberative process. And it is in this way that uh, a community learns that it is not just enough to, um, uh, you know, to collect uh, decisions one after the other, but also to reflect on them and engage as many actors as possible, including future generations, uh, in the process of constitution making. Thank you.